After visualizing the distribution of stock returns using a histogram, I would like to offer a bit more formal analysis of the distribution. To do that, I will again go to the data tab, find data analysis, but this time click on descriptive statistics. Okay. I've already made my um, selections here. So this is my input range, which is, which is my monthly returns, uh, starting from 1990, January. And this is gonna be my output range, just this uh, empty cell here. And I would like to see the summary statistics. Just click OK. And here they are. Let me just make this wider rid of this and do some formatting just to make it look a bit nicer. Okay, let's do this one. I'm just picking the ones that, I'm, that I want to discuss. Okay, here we are. So over the 30 year period, which I'm examining from January 90 to um, end of uh, 2019, the average or the mean monthly Microsoft return was 2%. Okay. The median was slightly higher, 2.20%. In general, the median is less sensitive to outliers to extreme return observations. Both are measures of centrality. So both give us an idea about the average. Um, mean is just the average, whereas median is different. It's the, basically it's the 50th percentile of a distribution. So it's half of the observation. So half of the returns are uh, less than 2.21% and half of the returns are higher than 2.21%. So by construction, this is uh, less sensitive to outliers. Now, standard deviation. So this gives us an idea about return volatility was almost 9%. So we could say average monthly return was 2% with a volatility of almost 9%. The minimum monthly return was minus 34%, pretty bad if you were holding that stock during that month. And the pre maximum was 40%, pretty good if you happen to be a shareholder at that time. So I have 30 years of monthly data, which makes 30 times 12, 360 monthly observations. And the final two metrics or statistics I would like to talk about are courtesies and skewness. Now skewness is about the symmetry of a distribution. So if a distribution is symmetric, so if you draw an axis, a vertical axis in the middle, looks exactly the same on both sides, skewness would be zero. So skewed distributions are not symmetric, so they might have positive skewness which is the case here, which means a long right tail, or they might have negative skewness, which is a long left tail. So in this period, the returns were had slight positive skewness, so they were not perfectly symmetric. Now, courtesies is different. It is about the tails of a distribution, and normal distribution has an excess courtesies of zero. So if we see a positive figure here, this means that our distribution has more courtesies than relative to the normal distribution. And that means that the distribution has fat tails. So there are more extreme outcomes on both tails relative to a normal distribution. If you think about the concept of, concept of black swans, that's the same idea. So these are extreme observations that are likely to occur more often than one would expect in, in 
in a normal distribution, right? So we can see that for Microsoft, there are indeed some extreme observations causing fat tails and yielding a positive curtises. Now, this is Microsoft. Let's have a look at our other stock, which is Kellogg, to offer a comparison. Again, let's go to data. Again, data analysis, descriptive statistics. Everything is selected. So this sheet has the same structure as the previous one. So I don't need to touch anything here. So these are my returns, input cells from 1990 to 2020. Output range can stay the same. Summary statistics check. So just click OK. Let's see what we've got. Again, just bear with me while I do some uh, formatting. So I would like to format this as percentage just to make it slightly easier to interpret. And we would like to look at the median as well. Standard deviation, uh, maximum and sorry, minimum and oop. No, not that one, uh, minimum and uh, maximum. So let's just, right, here we are. So the average Kellogg return over this period was much lower, 0.9%. The median was 1.3%. Uh, so Microsoft, we had 2% and 2.2%. So you might say, okay, Microsoft, did better, but that's not the whole story. So if we just looked at return, nobody should have hold, nobody should, should have held shares of Kellogg. Everyone should have held shares of Microsoft. But we can't just look at return, we need to look at risk as well. So in this case, our measure of risk is standard deviation or uh, return volatility which is not always the best measure of risk, but in this case, we can use it. So Microsoft returns had a volatility of almost 9%. In comparison, Kellogg um, returns had volatility of less than 6%. So they were less volatile. And now it, it does make more sense. So yes, Microsoft offer, offered higher return on average, over 30 years, but the returns were also more volatile. So your portfolio value, if, if you just had the Microsoft stock in it, would go up and down more than if you had just Kellogg in it. In general, risk and return go hand in hand. We, say, we tend to we'll always say that they are the same, uh, two sides of the same coin. So in order to achieve higher return, you have to accept higher risk. So this is a clear example of that. What else? The minimum return was minus 21%. The max was plus 25%. Again, the extreme observations are a bit less extreme compared to Microsoft. We have the same number of observations. Skewness is quite close to zero. So in this case, the distribution is pretty symmetric. Very slight positive skewness. And Curtis's is again positive, suggesting that the distribution has uh, fatter tails compared to the normal distribution. We call these distributions leptocurtic, by the way. And again, it just means that the possibility or the probability of observing extreme observations is higher uh, than under a normal distribution. This is common, quite common for uh, stock return distributions. They do tend to have uh, positive curtises and uh, fatter tails relative to a normal distribution. And that's all I want to say about the distribution of uh, these uh, two stocks. Uh, stock returns, monthly returns. And we will uh, move on to our next topic in the uh, forthcoming video.